much for being here as we worship to this evening. Um, as you know, we have four worship opportunities each weekend, Thursday evening at 7, the online resource, Sunday indoors at 8 in the morning, and in the parking lot at 9.30. The children's Bible time is from 9 to 9.30 on Sundays, and the elementary age meet at the north door of the church and the high schoolers at the west door. In prayer this evening, we remember all who are sick or ailing, especially Lynn Tilly. We want to be able to help the women of the ELCA as they gather the items that are needed for the school kits and the baby care kits. And also, if possible, remember to uh, provide funding for our Lutheran disaster response as we help those who suffered in Hurricane Ida, those in the Haiti earthquake, and we're thinking also of those who've suffered in the wildfires in the Western states. Much of the service is in your bulletin, and we're going to begin now with our greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Pray together the prayer of the day from the insert with your bulletin at the top of the page. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading from Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, 
that you lay the burden of all this people on me. Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land <clears throat> to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where, I, where am I to get meat to give all, to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out, told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord would put his spirit on them. Psalm, Psalm 19, the teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The status of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the cone. By them also is the servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can direct one's offenses? Cleanse me from the secret faults. Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Second reading, James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any one among you wanders from the truth and is brought back to another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose 
the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The focus verse for our text this evening is from the first lesson. Moses said, I'm not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. Two young boys, one Catholic and one Lutheran, were talking about their churches one day and the Catholic boy asked the Lutheran boy, how big is the Lutheran church? And the Lutheran boy said, five and a half feet. And the Catholic boy said, but how do you know it's five and a half feet? Well, the Lutheran boy said, just yesterday, my dad, who's six feet, two inches tall, said to me, I've had it up to here with the Lutheran church. <laughs> As the Israelites trudged along through the wilderness, they had it up to here with that manna stuff, that bread-like substance they picked off the ground every morning and ate day in and day out, their only food in the wilderness up to this point. Oh, they craved their old diet when they were back in Egypt. Never mind that they were slaves while they were in Egypt, but they want some of that fish and meat and cucumbers and melon and leeks and onions and garlic to flavor their food. They're sick and tired of that same old manna every day. Well, Moses and the Lord have had it up there here with the Israelites. The Lord is angry with them. Moses is mad at them. He says to the Lord, Lord, I can't carry this whole grumbling multitude by myself. Did I conceive them? Did I give birth to them that they should be carried in my arms like an infant? They are your offspring. You carry them. I'm not able to carry this people alone. They're too heavy for me. God accepts Moses' challenge. Choose 70 of the elders. Have those 70 serve as leaders over subunits of the people. Kind of an early form of representative government. They'll come and tell you what's going on with their subunit. And together you can make a change, a difference, do things better for them. So these 70 are called to the tent of meeting. Tabernacle, remember that word? Another way to say the tent of meeting. And there, some of the spirit that God has put on Moses spills over onto the 70, and they are able to prophesy and to become leaders with Moses of the Israelite encampment. So Moses no longer has to feel so alone. Here are these 70 to help him to share the load with him. Sometimes in the busy fall of the year, when all, the whole churchly program starts up once again and everything has to get moving at the same time, we think of senior pastors like Pastor Dan and how fast they have to run around trying to get all the plates twirling in the air at the same time. And we look at how he goes from meeting to meeting from one Zoom conference to another. Maybe a crisis appears, then it's confirmation class, perhaps a funeral that week to do, and two blinks, and then it's Sunday again. But look at what the Lord provides for our pastor, a visitation pastor to help, and a congregation council 
and some ministry branches and an office manager and musicians and a custodian. And maybe best of all is that jewel of a spouse Pastor Dan has, Beth, who can help him also carry the burden, share the load, so ministry can get done. The number of those who share the load seems always to be greater than we realize or than we're aware of at any given moment. You noticed how in our first lesson, a young man runs up to Moses and tattles on Eldad and Medad, who are prophesying in the camp where the Israelites all live. They weren't called as part of the 70 to come to the tent of meeting, the tabernacle. They're in the, in the camp, but some of the spirit poured off from Moses onto these two also, and they're prophesying. They're getting ready to be leaders as well. Stop them, Joshua says. No, Moses says. Let them prophesy. I wish all of God's people had the spirit on them. I wish they could all prophesy. I wish they would all be busy using their gifts and talents and abilities to carry this people forward, to help share the load. In the early portion of the gospel, we heard the gospel parallel to that Old Testament story. John runs up to Jesus. There's this guy who's casting out demons in your name, but he's not following along with us. Shall we stop him? No, Jesus says. As long as he's not against us, he's for us. If any give even a cup of cold water to those who are in need, they will not lose the reward. They won't lose the kingdom to which I'm calling them. Jesus seems to be saying that he's only too glad for everybody to have the spirit, to join in the ministry, to carry it along, to help share the load. No one ever shares our load better than Jesus himself. We think of those marvelous words of his, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden or carrying a heavy load and I will give you rest. I'm gentle and humble of heart. You will find rest for your souls. I'm your yoke mate. I'm with you in the harness. I'm pulling the load with you. I'm carrying your burdens too so you're never alone. You're always supported and strengthened by my presence with you. Never did he share our load or carry it better than when he bears our sins in his body on the cross. Then he hoists up on his shoulders all those misdeeds, all those sins, all those wrongs and faults that we've done and carries them there for us and pays the debt for us and sets us free to be his people and pours on us a portion of the Spirit, so that we can also help carry the load of others. I heard a story recently about a driver who was driving too fast down a country road and slid off into a muddy ditch and couldn't get the car back on the road. And he noticed a farmhouse nearby. And he went up to it, knocked on the door, and an old Amish farmer answered the door. And the fellow told him his trouble, and the guy said, I don't have a tractor to pull you out of the ditch with, but I have my good old workhorse, Buddy. So he got Buddy and took him over to the car and hooked him up to the car, and then the Amish farmer went around on the other end of the car, and he yelled out, pull, Nellie, pull. Nothing happened. He yelled again, pull, Nellie, pull. Still nothing. Then all of a sudden he yelled, pull, buddy, pull. And buddy pulled with all his might and pulled that car right out of the ditch back up onto the road. So the driver said, wow, thank you so much. But why did you call buddy by the wrong name twice? And the farmer said, well, you see, buddy is blind. But his harness mate is Nellie. 
Now, if I tell him to pull all by himself, he'd just ignore me, he wouldn't pull at all. But if he thinks Nellie is there, then he pulls with all his might and he can pull any load anywhere because Nellie's next to him. That's us and Jesus. If we know our yoke mate is there, our Savior is beside us, we can pull with confidence. We can pull a load bigger than we thought we could pull. We can pull it further. We can do it because he's there and he's our harness mate. And if he's there, we can do anything. As we share the load in daily life, we're always pulling as a unit, as a body, as a team. We're not there to pull in our own direction, go off, do our own thing, be the Lone Ranger, or try to somehow think that we're not accountable to anyone else. Rather, we work as a unit and a body and a team to get Christ's mission done. Moses and the elders worked together. They came and reported to Moses, he helped them, and together they did their best for the people of Israel. And Jesus, when he sends out the disciples two by two, has them come back and report to him, and he tells them all kinds of ways to do ministry, even better than they've been doing it. If we are accountable to no one else, do our own thing, then we end up with a disorganized, confused mess. One church had teams of visitors go out on Sunday afternoon, knock on doors, invite people in the neighborhood to their church. And one team went and knocked on a door and a man answered and they invited him to their church and he said, I don't believe in organized religion. And one of the teams said, oh, you're going to love our church. No one's <laughs> ever accused us of being organized. So it's not meant to be a straitjacket, the organizing, but it's meant to help us pull in the same direction so that we can accomplish common goals, purposes together. Our choir director expects the four parts to sing together in harmony. And our Sunday school and confirmation program need the pastor, the parents, the students, and the teachers and guides to pull together in one direction, right, so that we can help our youth grow in faith and life in Christ. And the women of the ELCA, as they now are gathering the items for the school kits and the baby care kits, they need people who give donations. They need people who will pack the items into boxes. They need trucks to carry it, the first part of the journey. And they need cargo planes to distribute those items around the whole world to kids who need them through Lutheran World Relief. In other words, organized together to accomplish the mission, the purpose, the goal. No matter what our age, our skills, our abilities, makes no difference, we can help share the load and get the gospel further into the world. One wise, experienced Sunday school teacher was concluding her class with the first graders one Sunday morning, and she was having them do that old finger play with the little rhyme. You remember, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, see all the people. So the kids were getting into the rhyme, they were getting into the finger play, enjoying themselves when the teacher noticed the new girl in the class, Krista, had only one hand. Oh, the teacher panicked inside. How could I have overlooked that? Left this little girl out. Now what am I going to do? She was in such a dither that she didn't know what to do next 
when all of a sudden a young boy in the class went around the table to Krista and gave her his left hand and Krista put together her right hand and he said, let's do church together. And that's what they began to do, giggling and laughing together. That's always the way we do it. We do church together. We've got the Lord in the harness next to us, helping us carry the load, pouring out spirit upon us so that we can help carry one another's burdens so that we can accomplish the ministry Christ has for us to do. Amen. Now we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and it's um, there for you in your bullet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. As we pray together, when you hear the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. When we carry a heavy load in life, thank you, Lord, for sharing the load and bearing our burdens with us. Help us in daily life and within the congregation to bear each other's burdens and share the load. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all farmers that they may be kept strong and safe as they begin to bring in the harvest and that all of us may together be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in authority and leadership positions. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, and other diseases. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days to come. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Grant your healing power to the sick, especially Lynn Tilly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, ushers, greeters. Bless us through their ministry and grant them passion to continue in their service. Bless all our fall ministries, worship, children's Bible time, confirmation, council nominations, gathering of the school kits and the baby care kits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, all those we have loved and known and who have meant so much to our lives. Especially this evening, we give you thanks for Sandy. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.